Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to what's known as pure covalent bonding. Let's begin our discussion by considering two unbonded fluorine atoms. I've shown them here as Bohr models, the simplest atomic models necessary to explain pure covalent bonding. Now you'll notice that these unbonded fluorine atoms have seven valence electrons each. What this means is that these two fluorine atoms would each like to gain an electron to get up to eight valence electrons and therefore satisfy the octet rule. The problem we run up against here is that fluorine atoms having similar electronegativities both want to receive an electron. Neither is willing to donate an electron in an exchange process like we would see in ionic bonding. So what are our fluorine atoms going to do? Well, if they come close enough together, they can share some of their valence electrons. Notice that in this depiction, the fluorine atom on the left believes that it has eight valence electrons, whereas the fluorine atom on the right also believes it has eight valence electrons. So at the moment, they both believe they've satisfied the octet rule. This is possible because two electrons are actually shared between them and count for each of the fluorine atom's valence shells. And because we know that it takes two electrons to make one chemical bond, some simple math leads us to the conclusion that molecular fluorine should have a single bond. And so when we draw molecular fluorine, for example, as Lewis structures or ball and stick models, we always do so with one line connecting our two atoms, indicating that the molecule is joined by a single bond. Let's try one more. How about oxygen? Here we have two oxygen atoms, each of which have six valence electrons this time. But again, they have very similar electronegativities, and so they're not likely to exchange electrons in an attempt to achieve octets. Instead, if they move closer together, again, they can share some of their electrons, fooling one another into thinking that they actually have eight valence electrons in their shell. And we accomplish this phenomenon by sharing four electrons between the two oxygen atoms this time. So when we draw oxygen, we typically draw it like this, with two lines connecting the atoms indicating that they're joined by a double bond. Next time, we're going to talk about polar covalent bonding, a covalent bonding phenomenon in which electrons aren't shared equally between the two bonding partners. But for now, this concludes our discussion of pure covalent bonding. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival, and as always, see you on the next video.